in our organizations today, the process of keeping track who is on the network, what they're doing, and making sure that only the right permissions are getting provide access to those resources is a pretty big job. And it's really technology that has laid this requirement right at our feet. Some users, in fact, have many different digital identities. They have logins that they use in the organization. And they have logins they use outside of the organization. They might have logins to their bank account. They might have logins to log on to their web-based email system. And they're having to juggle also a lot of different usernames and a lot of different passwords. Words. Well, managing all of this together for a security professional gets to be a bit challenging because, unfortunately, many users will duplicate passwords across multiple accounts. And they may be using a password at work to log into their Windows domain that may be identical to the password they're using to log into their Google Mail. So if somebody happened to fish their Google Mail account, now there's a potential for risk that someone could gain access to their corporate resources. To mitigate these issues that can come from having all of these multiple accounts, we need to put a different set of processes in place. And one thing that we should be very careful about is the process we use to reset a password. If you automate this too much or don't have enough change control associated with that, you could be putting your accounts at risk. And a really good example of this was in September the 16th of 2008. We were in the middle of a presidential campaign, and the vice pres presidential candidate for the Republican Party of the United States, Sarah Palin, had her Yahoo email exploited using the automated process that Yahoo uses to reset your password. The message that came up to the person who exploited this was, what's your birthday? And because Sarah Palin was such a public figure, her birthday was one that was very, very easily available. And by simply putting Sarah Palin's birthday in, that person was able to reset the password and had access to the Yahoo account that she was using when she was governor of the state of Alaska. So already there are so many problems associated with this. If there were just a few stops along the way, a few checks and balances, it might have been possible possible to prevent somebody from using such a very simple kind of information from gaining access to what was clearly a very, very important email account. Another way to mitigate some of these issues is using single sign-on. If you're logging in and you're presenting a username, a password, and maybe some multi-factor authentication, you can be assured that the person who's logging in is exactly who we might expect it to be. But you don't want to put too much trust out there, especially if you're only using a username and password. Maybe you only do single sign-on in your environment. If you're dealing with a lot of third parties out there, you may not be comfortable with them accessing your Kerberos database that you might have, and you might be uncomfortable accessing theirs. So maybe that's not the best of ideas, but at least having some set up internally can prevent people from having a lot of usernames and a lot of different passwords. And as we mentioned, multi-factor authentication also helps with this. If somebody has to carry around a smart card, they have to carry around a token generator, then we can be assured that when they're logging in with their username and their password, at least they have to have that piece of hardware with them to help prevent some of these problems. So putting some of these controls in place and some of these processes can help us mitigate problems that might occur when somebody is using the same usernames and the same passwords not only at work but outside of work as well.